Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships. And today I am going to be talking about submarines, uh, specifically regarding an upgrade and commander build video for the submarines. Now, I did one of these videos over a year ago, and I've seen recently, I just checked to see how my videos are doing for the past month, and that video has been the most viewed video I've had. Well, it's been the top of top number one spot for the top 10 videos of the past 28 days. So, um, in that video, as I had pinned like, I think nine months ago or something, that that video was uh, out of date. As soon as I made that video, Wargaming announced more changes to submarine commander skills, yada, yada, yada. And they've changed submarines so many times now that it's just ridiculous to keep up with. And so I decided I'm gonna wait for a long time before I do another one of these videos. So, um, so now I'm going to be doing one of those videos. So um, I've played all the different, uh, I've played through all the American submarines. I've played through all the German submarines. I might bounce to a couple different ones just to show them to you briefly. Um, but uh, I do not own the tier eight or tier 10 German or American submarine. I have both the tier sixes. Um, so whatever XP I grinded, of course, uh, when those ships were available is completely gone now. So. Um, so we're just going to be looking at the tier six, um, Cachalot? <laughs> no idea how to pronounce this, uh, submarine Cachalot, something like that. So, um, I'm going to just kind of do a general upgrade and commander build video with this submarine in mind, and then we'll jump up and look at the other submarines towards the end of the video. So hopefully we can do this all within, uh, 30 minutes. So, um, so we're going to just start off as normal. So American submarine, what we got going on here? American submarines are kind of special in the sense that they have both uh, the bow torpedoes. We have four bow torpedoes and two stern torpedoes. Um, so that's uh, rather spicy. Um, so it means you can dump all your torpedoes from your fronts and then as you turn and leave, you can launch your rear torpedoes uh, from the submarine. Now in terms of the armor scheme uh, here at tier six, we have 16 millimeter across the sides. Um, so nothing's going to change there except just the top, which is 13 millimeters. So you're more um, going to take some more HE damage from destroyers and stuff if when you're surfaced. Um, and, you know, most shots are going to be hitting more up here, per se, unless your periscope depth, uh, of course, as well. Um, so that's what you're working with. Now, in terms of survivability, you have 14,000 hit points. Okay, that's what we have um, here for now. Um, artillery, we do have a secondary armament gun um, here. Now, you cannot control this gun like you can on the Japanese submarine, the I-56, as a premium. Um, nor, I think, the new British submarine line is getting guns, you, secondary guns you can control manually. So this just fires at will on its own. It's a 76.2 millimeter gun. Not very accurate, but it is possible to actually finish off a low health target with a secondary gun. So let's go ahead and look at the um, modules, for example, for what we have here on the Cachalot. Um, so uh, your first is your Hall A. Um, so you'd be starting off with 11,700 hit points and a lower dive capacity of 845 units. So the Hall is what you're gonna to wanna to upgrade first. Um, that's typically across the board for any ship, regardless of class in the game. So now we've elevated ourselves to 14,000 hit points. And then um, you can see your dive capacity jumps up to 170 units. Um, units so that's good. And then you have your sonar. Uh, so you can see here your reload time is 9.5 seconds, uh, where if you upgrade it, it goes to 7.5 seconds. Um, I don't think the sonar is the second thing you need to upgrade. Uh, what I would say is the torpedoes, but a comment I want to make about sonars uh, for those of you who are wanting to get more into playing submarines in the game um, is don't constantly ping your target. If you want to be a good submarine player, um, you know, sometimes there'll be uh, so like your torpedoes. So we have uh, four here. So you might fire, maybe you fire all four or you fire two and then you wait a couple seconds to fire the next two. And then when your torpedoes are say halfway to the target, um, depending on your distance. And then you go ahead and ping the target. Um, if you, most submarine players, they ping the target first and then they launch their torpedoes. And that, for players, surface ship players, you're getting used to submarines. 
Um, try to estimate how much time they have maybe before they pop their damage control party. And if you're just spamming every 7.5 seconds with your sonar um, to get a ping lock on, um, one, you're going to be annoying the surface ship player a lot, but then two, um, there's no really surprise in terms of when torpedoes arrive because they're just like, oh, he's going to be constantly spamming me and I probably have X amount of time and I, he's pinging me from this distance, yada, yada, yada. Um, so don't, don't be pinging constantly, okay? So you don't have to get this one first. Go for the torpedoes first. Um, so here you can see that what happens here is our reload time and our damage is going to go up. So reload time goes up to 42 seconds, and this is with no commander skills um, taken into account. Um, and then our damage goes up from 7,033 to 7,833. Um, and that's pretty, I mean, it's decent. I mean, it's kind of what the ship revolves around, right? This torpedoes and a secondary gun. Um, now, what's also amazing about these torpedoes, uh, I think starting off before I even put this um, upgrade on, these torpedoes, I think they're like 80 knots, maybe just under 80, I don't remember. And so having 86 knot torpedoes at tier six is rather ridiculous. Uh, there's been so many things that Wargaming has changed and refixed since the last time I did an upgrade and commander build video. So a lot of things from that video to this video are just gonna look different um, because they kept tweaking everything regarding the commander, regarding this, uh, the skills, regarding um, consumables, which we'll get into. And then you have your propulsion, so just a 3,000 horsepower engine. Um, and then if you put Sierra Mike flag on, you're going to go up from, I think that's 27 knots to 28.4 knots. And your maximum submerged speed goes from 13 to 13.6. So you're faster on the surface um, than where you are underneath the water. Um, and this changes significantly as you go up through the higher tier submarines. Now in terms of the upgrades, so on a tier eight, you have five, I think it is. Um, and then tier nine and 10, which we only have tier eight and tier 10 submarines in the game, uh, you go into six. So I'll put some pictures in here showing you the different skill options there. I'll just go ahead and talk about it. Imagine if they were here, um, but I can show you with Bilal and uh, jumping up to that. So here you can see I have the main arms modification one. Uh, I'm, done this mainly for the risk of torpedo tubes becoming capacitated to be reduced by negative 20%. Now, torpedo tube survivability goes up by plus 50% and torpedo tube repair time goes down by negative 20%. So our torpedo tube survivability, especially on the tier, I don't know if this wants to get to the tier 10 submarines, um, there's a upgrade I recommend taking and increasing your survivability and reducing the risk of torpedoes becoming capacitated is actually pretty important. Um, and plays a large role in that. So um, I've gone for this, it's what your ship revolves around. It's the only armament you have outside of that secondary main battery or secondary battery gun. So I recommend that. Uh, sonar modification, uh, risk of sonar becoming capacitated, negative 25%, sonar repair time, negative 25%. I mean, if you're being a stealthy submarine and you're not constantly spamming the sonar, making it very difficult for surface ship players to figure out where you are, um, or the automatic um, anti-submarine warfare depth charges that the carriers get now. You want to be doing sonars less um, compared to when they first introduced submarines into the game. Um, so you're not going to be using your sonar so much, but you will always be using your torpedoes, right? So main arm is modification one. I don't recommend the damage control party modification one. It extends your action time by plus 40%. Um, so your considerable action time now is 15 seconds. Uh, so that puts you up, what, close to 18, 19 seconds? Um, well, I guess this, it'd be almost half, uh, so seven and a half. So like, yeah, adding, I guess, about six seconds on, five, six seconds, so 20 to 21 seconds. Um, what you have to do as a submarine player is you have to manage these well. Um, I've seen too many submarine players pop these too early, and then they get hit with a permanent fire or flooding, whatever that may be. So you want to be mindful about that, but we'll talk a little bit more about it here in a minute. For the second slot, um, I don't recommend taking damage control system modification one. It just reduces the risk of catching fire, risk of flooding, negative five, negative three percent. But I do recommend taking engine room protection because it reduces the risk of your engine and your steering gears becoming incapacitated by negative 20 percent. Um, it's pretty important because your livelihood as a submarine uh, revolves around your speed and your maneuverability. So you definitely want this. And then your engine repair time and your steering gears repair time is negative 20%. For the 
For the third slot, I've gone for maximizing the torpedoes. Uh, so torpedo speed plus 5%, which is getting us up to that 86 knot torpedoes, which at tier six is rather ridiculous. Torpedo tubes traverse speed plus 20% and risk of torpedoes tubes becoming incapacitated negative 40 percent and again this is going to be important if especially if you're building up the line on the higher tier submarines in the game now you also have dive capacity um this uh, increases your recharge rate per second by plus 10 percent so if i go to dive capacity i can see dive capacity recharge rate uh dive capacity recharge rate when on the surface 1.2 units um i think that's like a second um, is what that measurement stands for. So um, you can be able to help replenish your dive capacity, but usually in terms of your dive capacity, you're not using a lot necessarily at the beginning of the game. Now, unless you're going across the entire map underwater to um, yoink the CV player, but you're taking your time and the dive capacity comes more important in I would say the mid stage to later stage of the game. Um, when you can make some more um, significant plays as a submarine. Um, so for me, personally, as when I played submarines, this doesn't bother me too much to not have dive capacity because I really want to increase the lethality. I think that's a word of my torpedoes. The other one is your sonar modification too. This is your sonar ping velocity. Uh, so you can make the uh, increase the sonar ping velocity to 660 meters a second. Um, because it's just uh, plus 10% and 10% of 600 is 60 uh, of 600. So um, so your ping is traveling faster. Um, but again, if you get the hang of the different ping velocities across the different tiered submarines, uh, honestly, I don't see a major use for it as long as you're timing and uh, giving enough lead to your targets that you're pinging. Now for your fourth slot, you have damage control system modification two, uh, fire extinction time and flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Um, I don't see the a huge advantage uh, of this um, because the other two I see as being more important. Uh, one being the propulsion modification one, time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 50%. So very helpful if you're in danger um, or you're about to get spotted or you're needing to quickly avoid some depth charges that you think are probably going to be incoming from this battleship player because you just pinged to drop out your torpedoes, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's very good to have. And then the other, which you can see that I have mounted right now, is the submarine steering gears modification 2. Um, and this is improving the rudder shift time and the diving plane shift time. Um, let's see, can we pull up our maneuverability? Um, so the maneuverability, you may have noticed sometimes, especially when you're playing at the higher tier, um, you'll be a destroyer and you'll be trying to line up a depth charge strike on a submarine player. And the submarine player has a better rudder shift and a better turning circle radius than you do. Um, so I think if we compare that, maybe we can see with some tier six destroyers in here. So let's see, what, what does Gnevany have? 610. Uh, Agla, not too great, 680. Uh, we'll see about Icarus, probably better. Yeah, 540, Farragut, probably slightly worse. Yeah. Um, so you have a tighter um, turning circle radius than other destroyers in the game. Uh, and we're, uh, I gotta go back to capture lock. Um, so that's actually uh, frustrating for this destroyer player because usually they have to slow down to then try to get more turned in to be able to line up a strike on you. So that's kind of one of the reasons that I like taking the submarine gears modification too. And then I'll highlight um, another module slot. So um, I'll just go ahead and let's just hop up to, oops, wrong way, to the Bilal. So I can just show you hands on the uh, tier five and or the, the fifth and sixth slot okay so for the fifth slot you have the torpedo lookout system assured acquisition range of torpedoes 1.8 kilometers um to me this isn't important don't take it ship consumables modification one the consumable action time so you just extended your action time by 20 percent um for all of your different consumables which i will talk about shortly um 
So I've kind of like, mm, oh, sorry, 10%, not 20%. So I haven't felt so much of a use there, but what I do feel quite a use on is the Summering Steer, Steering Gears Modification 3. So that's why I like running that, especially for uh, the Tier 8 and Tier 10 submarines. Um, the fourth slot I was just pointing out, the Summering Steering Gears Modification 2. Because you register for time, diving shift time, negative 20%, negative 20%, and then you stack this one on, rudder shift time, negative 40%, diving shift, uh, diving plane shift time, negative 40%, steering gears repair time, negative 80%. So you're becoming uh, rather agile in terms of your um, rudder shift time and your diving plane shift time. Um, so that is actually quite nice in my opinion, and, and gives you greater maneuverability, and I think helps, for me at least, um, and being able to uh, find a little bit more um, positioning, getting more at, um, lining up for strikes and stuff. So I really actually appreciate this, um, being able to um, have a faster diving shift uh, plane time. Uh, so then, yeah, I recommend that. And I'd say the same thing for the was it U2501 to tier 10 German sub. And then for the six slots, uh, I recommend going for the torpedo tubes modification two. Your torpedo tube reload time drops by negative 15%. So that's uh, quite nice, but you take a greater risk of your torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated. Um, but that is why um, we've taken this negative 40% and then this um, increasing our survivability um, and reducing the risk of them becoming incapacitated. Um, so it helps come around this skill um, in that sense because, I mean, I have nothing. Of course, I don't own the Bilal now, um, but our torpedoes, uh, their reload time, 46 seconds, um, and it reloads sets of two with the German subs, all the, unless they've changed that. All German uh, torpedoes reload simultaneously rather than sets uh, like they do for the Bilal because you get uh, six in the front, four in the back. So for me, that is um, rather nice. Uh, so you're being able to have a greater DPM with your torpedoes. You also have dive capacity modification too. It gives you a larger dive capacity by plus 15%. Uh, your mileage may vary. Now you may, as a submarine player, may be doing some things like you're purposely, you're diving up um, with people to take out CVs. And so you want to have that additional dive capacity to basically run across from the, the B line uh, down to the I line where the submarine play, uh, CV player is. So then this may be um, more of your play style if that's, so you might want to take this over the torpedo tubes modification too, um, because you're focusing more on your stealthiness and making one big strikes and then disappearing into the shadows. Um, so that's kind of the caveat there. It just really comes into your play style, but I, I don't do that um, as a player. Just, I mean, I think it's hysterical when I watch submarine players go dive the entire time into the battle and six, seven minutes later, they're on the other side of the map and they just yoink the CV player. Because um, I like to try to have maybe more influence in playing more team play. But I mean, it still is team play taking out CV, right? So then coming back uh, down here, let's talk about um, the armaments, actually. Um, we, we should do that. Uh, so here's the sonar, maximum range 10 kilometers, reload time right now 7.5 seconds. Um, duration of a ping effect on a sector highlighted once, 25 seconds. Duration of a ping effect on a sector highlighted twice, 50 seconds. So this is the thing, right? So if you are able to get a ping effect on a sector highlighted once for 25 seconds, why do you need to keep pinging the target every 7.5 seconds? And you keep telegraphing your location to the enemy ships. You get the ping, let it sit for a while, and then once it's, say, six seconds or something from uh, your ping effect going away, go ahead and ping them again. Now, if you get lucky and they're able to ping twice um, and you have 50 seconds, you don't have to keep pinging them for uh, that remaining 43, 42.5 seconds, right? Why would you keep pinging them again and again and again and again? Focus on your stealth as a submarine player. Keep them guessing that they don't know when the, sub the torps are coming. So they get pinged once and then you fire all your torpedoes. They're like, wait, did he just ping me or did he actually get to launch torpedoes? Because if you keep pinging the enemy ship, you keep telling him I as a submarine player am focused on you and I am sending torpedoes your way guaranteed because I'm 
keep pinging you. Uh, so focus on not pinging so much. Now on tier six, we only have the Acousta coming torpedoes, uh, where the higher tier you have um, the other torpedoes, which I guess I'll just hop back up to Bilal to show you, and then we should be able to remain here with the catch a lot for the remainder of the time. But the Acousta coming torpedoes, they home in on any ship that you've highlighted with your ping. Uh, once they start homing in, torpedoes cannot change target. Um, hitting a highlight sector a second time increases maneuverability of launch torpedoes. So um, that is why the double ping is very good. Like you want to always go for the double ping if possible. And so if you um, struggle with your pings, and of course, then that might be a bit of a challenge. So you want to work on that skill as a submarine player. Um, but it's these torpedoes do uh, are pretty decent because they are homing torpedoes, right? So here on the Cachalot, uh, they are a range of 10 kilometers, same as our sonar pings, uh, 7,833 maximum damage and torpedo speed of 86 knots. And it's hard, especially for tier six battleships to avoid 86 knot torpedoes that are homing in on them, right? Uh, so it's really good stuff there. Now, and going up to, I think I could probably just go to the uh, salmon here. Yeah, Salmon has it. Uh, salmon has just uh, regular torpedoes. They changed the names of this several times. But they're very uh, deadly against large targets, armor targets. Um, maneuverable ships have highest chances of dodging these torpedoes attacks. So these torpedoes, like this is what you would do if you're surfacing on a CV player, um, a larger cruiser, a battleship. Because they're just simply not going to have the time to avoid. And I'm referring to a little bit of shotgunning. Um, so, uh, because you still can shotgun in the game, or gaming, if you didn't know that, you still can, even though you have uh, have a uh, arming time threshold, they've extended a little bit, but it, honestly, it's not that big of a deal for average to skilled submarine players. Um, so these hit a lot harder. Uh, so you can see here, these are the same 7,833 damage torpedoes, uh, which I'm guessing, do we get an increase in damage here? Yes, we do get an increase in damage here uh, for the alternative torpedoes. So these guys. Um, so 7,833 compared to 12,500. Especially for the heavier cruisers, battleships, and CVs, they have a torpedo belt and um, reduces torpedo a torpedo reduction. Um, so they're not, you're not getting that for 12,500 damage because these targets, uh, these ships, have torpedo belts. Um, so it's great that, you know, you can increase your damage, particularly here, 13,867. So these are why these torpedoes work really well um, on large targets that are not so maneuverable. Okay, coming back down, um, in terms of the consumables, damage control party, um, you only have a limited number. This is something Wargaming changed. Uh, they used to have unlimited and they had a short reload time. Uh, but now the reload time after you use one of these is 60 seconds and action time 50 seconds, 15 seconds. And you can see here only three consumables. Um, so you have to utilize these wisely. Then the hydrophone while submerged highlights the terrain in positions of ships and submarines on the surface or at periscope depth that are beyond spotting range. So ship bearing eight kilometers away Consumable action time, 30 seconds. Interval between this ping going out is six seconds. So you can kind of see this little dot here. It basically lights up whatever ship that is in range um, and lets you know where they are. Also lets you know um, how it's positioned to ships and submarines. Yeah, also where terrain. Yeah, how it's terrain, that's also good. Reload time is 60 seconds, and you have an unlimited number of consumables, so don't be afraid to utilize these, okay? Um, and then the other thing they did is they kind of broke this up into two things. Um, so this focuses more on ships on surface or submarines at periscope depth. Um, this focuses on submarines that are under the water, that are beneath periscope depth. Um, so this, actually, this change didn't take, too long, uh, take place too long ago, so again, I'm glad I've waited over a year to do this. Um, so this will be a 2023 submarine guide. Um, detection of submarines six kilometers away, so it's not as farther distance, at least here at the catch a lot. Uh, considerable preparation time, very long preparation time, 330 seconds. 
considerable action time. You have a minute out of it and a reload time of 120 seconds. So the preparation time is uh, the start of the game. So you're going to have to wait for <laughs> several minutes before you can utilize the submarine surveillance. Uh, but after you, you've utilized it, um, so if you've used it for 60 seconds, then your reload time is going to be only 120 seconds. It's not going to be that 330 seconds. Okay, at least I'm interpreting that correctly. The other thing is the enhanced rudder gears. So your diving shift playing time and your maximum dive and ascent speed plus 20%. So sometimes you want to utilize these when you find yourself in a pickle. Maybe you're trying to avoid the hydroacoustic search um, by surface ships, or you just know that the area that you're in is about to become very hot with many red enemy ships coming for you. Uh, then you want to use these in more sticky situations is what I would refer to this as. So it acts for 30 seconds in a real time of 120 seconds, and you get just two of them uh, here at tier six. Now, in terms of what might I run down here, because, you know, a submarine can get caught on fire and uh, flooding, um, ramming, definitely take the Hotel Yankee. It's hysterical. Um, we want to reduce our consumable re reload time. Um, secondary battery firing range. I mean, if uh, <laughs> this is something that you think is funny to take, you can, um, but I don't really recommend it. Um, and then this is just a fire that would be from um, Chances of causing flooding. This is what this one does because we don't have a gun that's over 160 mil up to and including 160 millimeter. Okay, and then this one is up to and including 160 millimeter. Yeah um, So you can you can take this one as well, but this is kind of what in general I would say run on your submarine now this video is getting lengthy uh, so let me keep uh, trucking along. Um, so um, it's actually been a hot minute since I've looked at these. So I'm just going to uh, look at this with you. So um, first we have enhanced sonar, reduces sonar, um, reload time if your ship is detected by an enemy. That's uh, kind of dumb skill in my mind. A lot of these skills, I'm very frustrated with the uh, submarines. A lot of the skills are can be activated. So it can be activated. Um, can be activated, can be activated, can be activated, can be activated, um, can be activated. So only under certain situations when the pixie dust is working properly do some of these skills actually work. Um, and honestly that's rather frustrating in my opinion. Uh, you have liquidator, chances of causing flooding 30%, helmsman, um, reduces rudder diving plane shift time within 50 seconds after activating the hydrophone consumable so then you also have to remember how all these commander skills work priority target lets you know someone's aiming at you an incoming fire alert so let's say we want to increase our chances of flooding so i'll work out a 21 point commander build with you give me just a moment as we go through these Improved battery capacity, um, we can have a longer dive capacity plus 10%, but our dive capacity charge rate per second takes a hit at negative 20%. Torpedo crew retraining, or training, reduces torpedo tube reload time when your ship remains detected by an enemy. So that actually could be useful. We can go ahead and click on it for now. Consumable enhancements increases the action time of our consumables by plus 5%. Uh, don't think that's really worth it. Um, preventive maintenance, I would say is definitely worth it, reducing the risk of our torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine becoming capacitated. And of course, I would say last stand is a must uh, for a submarine player, so we'll just start off with these three skills. Um, preventive maintenance, or we talked about last stand, the ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine uh, and or steering gears incapacitated. So you are thrive on your maneuverability as a submarine player, so you want the last stand. For the third point skills, Enhanced Impulse Generator can be activated, increases your ping velocity while less than 33% of your ship's maximum dive capacity remains. So in our ping capacity, velocity plus 15%. So again, another can be activated skill. To me, it's rather annoying. Ping effect duration on a sector highlighted once plus 25%. Duration of a ping effect on a twice highlighted sector negative 15%. Um, to be honest, this skill I don't think is so good um, because, uh, as we read, when you 
ping a ship a highlight sector twice you are increasing the agility um, how did it phrase it uh, you increase Maneuverability of launch torpedoes. Yeah, so that's really what you should be going for and not just the one ping um, As you become more experienced as a player um, I think they've changed this around it used to be a little different, but it's that one Consumable specialist consumable preparation and reload time negative 15 percent. That could be useful. We'll revisit this one Watchful for an undetected submarine displays an indicator showing that the submarine is currently within the action range of activated enemy hydroacoustic search, surveillance radar, or submarine surveillance consumables. If you change depth while the indicator is displayed, you may be detected. So this is kind of like um, a World of Tanks, you have six cents, but that means you have been spotted like a couple seconds, then you get uh, noted with this. So this actually, in my opinion, is pretty good skill. Um, it's a defense skill. Um, it focuses on, you know, you might dive from a lot of danger that's happening above, and then you're like, wait, is it safe for me to surface? And then you might just wander into a hydroacoustic search, surveillance radar, what have you. So then, maybe not so just yet. Superintendent's going to give you an additional um, damage control party, and the, what is the name of that one? Enhanced rudder gear. Uh, so in my opinion, that would be uh, worth taking. So I'll pop that on for now. And then Adrenaline Rush. So this is the Adrenaline Rush we all know rather well. Uh, enhances ship parameters for each 1% of HP lost. So um, yes, I would actually like to take that. We also have Torpedo Aiming Master. This is a can-be activated skill. Um, when launching acoustic homing torpedoes at a ship with a sector that was highlighted twice, torpedo damage is increased. The sector that was highlighted twice needs to remain active until the torpedoes hit the ship. And that's a plus 15% uh, damage. Um, so this is quite the nasty skill, especially if you get sonar ping um, aiming down and you're able to hit uh, a sector of a ship twice quite often, then this may be a skill definitely for you. Then you have sonar and man expert. This is another can be activated skill. Increases the ping effect time on a sector that was highlighted within 30 seconds after activating the hydrophone a consumable um, yeah again I don't really see the value of this uh, maybe there are some some of you submarine players who really like this skill if you can you can speak below in the comments to it but I just don't uh, improved battery efficiency can be activated again increases dive capacity recharge rate on the surface while less than 50% of your ships uh, submarines maximum dive capacity remains Dive capacity recharge rate per second plus 25%. So that's actually uh, rather good, um, in my opinion. Let's check out our last one here. This is the enlarged propeller shaft. It's another can be activated skill. Increases the running speed on the surface and at periscope depth while less than 50% of your submarine's maximum dive capacity remains. Speed on the surface and at periscope depth um, plus 18%. So that's um, actually quite the boost. Uh, to your speed if we're being honest here um, So 18% um, I mean that's significant especially as you get up to the tier 8 and the tier 10 submarines um, So this could be something uh, quite worth taking um, As the battle progresses your speed is increasing whether that being at the surface speed uh, or surface uh, And at periscope depth with less than 50% of your ships uh, maximum dive capacity remaining um, so to be honest um, I could see two ways you could take the enlarged propeller shaft if you find that this is probably going to benefit you in a lot of situations or I could see taking the improved battery efficiency um, so that when the time comes uh, you can surface you can reclaim uh, your diving capacity that much quicker and then go back down under the water again so i can see either of these uh, being uh, rather good for now i'm going to highlight the enlarged propeller shaft this was something that again wargaming changed since the last time i've played and tested submarines so i think what i'm going to do here we have two points uh, remaining um what would i say to take with those last two points Let's see, our torpedoes reload 42 seconds right now. I don't want to take that one. That's not good. I can see taking the torpedo crew training. 
Um, this means you are detected by an enemy, um, but you're gonna get a 15% reduction in your torpedo two below time. So there's a lot of skills we've kind of been building into our torpedoes. Um, so I'd see this being a pretty uh, accurate uh, torpedo build. Uh, otherwise, if you are conscious, if you're going to be detected on the surface or something, and or how many ships are aiming at you, you could take priority targets, and then that means you only have one point left, or shift time, diving plane shift time, and then probably that. Um, otherwise, I feel pretty comfortable with going uh, for this and or picking this guy up. Um, so if you get really good at um, landing the or pinging a certain sector on a ship, highlighting it twice, and increasing your torpedo damage by plus 15%, that's pretty dang good. So if you're really good at that, um, I would say this is the primary build I would recommend taking. The second option I would say is this. The third option I would say is this. Again, these vary depending on your playstyle. Uh, the fourth option, which I kind of grudgingly say this, which I'm not too excited about. So um, this, this, or this number one, this number two, this number three. Uh, that's honestly what I would say. But um, for myself, um, I'm not too bad actually at landing um, highlighted sectors twice on a ship. Um, especially, you know, if you're going for a cruiser, battleship, carrier that are not um, so maneuverable. Um, so this is actually, this is probably what I would uh, take uh, for myself. Okay, so this video is already 35 minutes roughly. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was let's go to the German tech tree and let's look at the U2501 real quick. Uh, we're going to preview the ship. And we just wanted to look at the armor layout. Uh, so you go to up to 19 millimeter um, at the tier 10 and 16 millimeter on top, where it originally was 16 millimeter, I think, on catch a lot on the sides and 13 millimeter on top. Uh, so you get a little bit more um, armor here. Um, in terms of what is the excitement about um, a German submarine, which I actually, <clears throat> I prefer playing the German submarines um, over the American submarines because their torpedoes all reload simultaneously when you fire them all. Um, but I think think the catch to that was well, I'm looking at tier 8 which I think if they made the torpedoes damage not so high on here um, but what the German subs have is this reserve battery unit unit when the consumable is active the dive capacity does not deplete it is not it also doesn't restore on the surface uh, so if you need that extended action time uh, dive capacity while under the water then the German subs fit in quite well for that. So I've utilized this consumable quite a lot and I really appreciate it um, as a, when I'm playing the German subs, uh, cause I prefer them over the American submarines. Uh, just the difference is, is that um, your torpedoes, you only have them in the front. You don't have any stern torpedoes, um, but these six torpedoes will all reload simultaneously if you fire them all off in one batch as an example. Um, and here you can see 77 knots and we've not even built into anything in making these torpedoes faster. So I think that the German subs are better than the American submarines. But it just depends again on your play style and what you find a little bit more beneficial to you as a player. But I hope that this video has been helpful. As we start off 2023, this should be what I recommend as an upgrading commander build video uh, for submarines. Now I can't guarantee that Wargaming will change something next week or in a couple months from now. So just again, note that this video is the beginning of 2023 with some reads as they are. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you do not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.